Hello everyone, and welcome back to Old Mod 7. Uh, in the last episode, you might recall we set up this little area over here. This little workshop that we have sort of buried under. Well, I guess it's not it's not properly buried yet, but the, the idea was to sort of bury it a little bit under some sand up here. To sort of blend it in with the mountain a little bit, so it's, I don't know, not just a, you know, a platform with buildings on it. That we, we tend to fall into that trap, you know what I mean? We tend to just do quite a bit of a boring build. So, I, I don't know, I, I sort of plan to... I don't know, somehow make it look maybe a little less boring. Um, but, that, I mean, that, that's not the cool thing. The cool thing is, this is fissile fuel um, production. That's what this is. Obviously, the main production of these machines here along the side. Um, and another thing I actually want to do pretty much right now, um, as you can see, is pick this stuff up. Pick this stuff up as well. I would like to have them all running along the side. The reason I want to do this is because I want, I, I genuinely, I want this to be expandable. Um, and I don't like the fact that we sort of ended it with it not really being expandable, right? By like cutting it off at the edge here. I want this to be just, you know, maximum expandability. Um, the reason I want to do that is because using AE2, this setup that we have, it's phenomenal. None of these machines are linked directly to one another. All of the gases, all of the items, all of the liquids, they're flowing through the AE system as like the middleman, right? And so what what this means is that, let's say for example, this machine here, our rotary condensant trader, let's say this guy wasn't keeping up, we can just add another one onto the chain. And it, it is literally that simple up, up until, up until we run out of uh, connections here. Now, um, this guy can hold 32, which means we're pretty good. I, I don't think we have to worry um, for at least a long while, but I, I just wanted to quickly do that, um, at least on camera, just so you guys know like, 100% I think it's worth doing, um, keeping these guys separate. These guys as well, um, the, oh, these just get told to keep um, sulfur in there. And then these guys, yeah, are told to input and output below. And as you can see right now, it works perfectly. So these are pretty simple to set up. Um, obviously, I'm going to need to dig under here. Um, another issue with this design sort of is the fact that this is, I don't know, we, we built a beautiful catwalk. And whilst it's a beautiful catwalk, once again, for expandability, it's kind of a little bit tedious, you know what I mean? Having to place this catwalk every time, like it's fine, you know, we'll live. Um, but I thought I'd point that out because I, I yeah, expandability is good. So yeah, we can keep going in the line there, digging up the hole in the wall. That should be good. So what is next? Well, inside of our uh, system here, we have fissile fuel. We have a decent amount, 560 buckets worth, and we'll be getting more. Obviously it'll slowly keep processing as you can see. Um, so now we need a reactor. Now, in terms of the fish, uh, fissile reactor, we have none of the blocks, so I'm going to have to go and uh, add all these recipes. Um, but this shouldn't be too bad. And what I'm going to do, which we, we sort of rarely do this, but I am going to try to push for the um, the biggest size possible, right? We're going to try and uh, make, I believe, according to this wiki I'm looking at, that we want an 18 by 18 by 18. So if you do the math on that, you'll get a number. I don't know what that number is, but all I know is that we're going to need a lot of this stuff. <laughs> so the first thing is obviously the casing. We've got all this lead and stuff auto-crafted, so that should be fine. Um, yeah, let's just order some patterns. I was, I was going to be like, oh, should I try and use these? No, we should just put some fresh patterns in there. Um, so we've got this. Da -da -da. We'll go back and do thistle. Um, so we're going to want ports, obviously. We'll grab those. Obviously, the cases will be auto-crafted soon. Um, the logic adapter... We could use this. What this allows us to do is sort of control it with redstone, as in have the reactor turn off and on depending on certain values, right? Um, I think that's fine. We probably will set these guys up. We might not use them, but it's kind of better to just have them built into the system from the get-go so that if we do want to use them in the future, we don't have to break apart the machine, right? Um, next, we'll need these fuel uh, assemblies. And then right on the top of all of them, we will also need control rod something or others. These guys here, control rod assemblies. And then finally, because we, I mean, we want a beautiful build here. We're going to want some sort of glass. I believe there is reactor glass. We'll grab this stuff. Um, this, however, allegedly is going to need some enriched iron. Uh, mm, okay. We'll have to see what we do here. Why didn't I, I'm honestly surprised it didn't add in the carbon there. Normally it does that. Hold on. Hold on, I'll keep that there for now. Um, this is the infusing factory. These are the patterns. Um, so yeah, I just need to add... Uh, mm, yeah, okay, I, I know what we got to do. <laughs> um, what I need to do is get some enriched carbon to be there. I'm going to set this guy to be... I imagine eight. Usually these are eight. We'll double check though. Um, so for enriched iron, it will need 10 millibuckets. 
um, one enriched carbon turns into 80 uh, carbon. So yeah, th that's what we want. We want eight iron to go in and we're going to receive eight enriched ones on the other end. So we'll make that recipe. That should be good. Then the next recipe you need is for the enriched carbon, which is obviously going to be... Um, what do we have the most of? We have charcoal. So it's, it's going to be charcoal um, in the enrichment chamber. So that's guy, this guy over here. So he can get the uh, charcoal into that. This guy's going to get the infusing recipe. And the rest of these are just normal crafting recipes. So they can go in there. And I believe we are now good to go. <laughs> I believe so. Um, so, yeah. Once again, I am going to go back into this... Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, we're going to go into the other and keep building here for as long as we can get away with it. I think we can build the reactor in here. In terms of where the reactor is going to go is arguably going to be a little bit messier because I kind of just want to like place it right here, but like dug out sort of. Or we could place it here, cut out maybe. That, that, that could work, that could work. I, I've got some visions, okay. Um, we're going to search fission. I'm going to grab, I don't know, three stacks of this so far. We'll, we'll get that crafting. Oh, okay. It's already crafted. Beautiful. <laughs> so we'll grab this stuff out. Um, I'll probably need a building and stuff. Um, how far back do I want this? Because I kind of want to just like slap it like here. You know what I mean? And then we'll like build up sand on the side of it as well. And this is obviously going to be an 18 by 18. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, so on. I'll keep counting and I'll be back. Okay, so this is the size of it, allegedly. Uh, it's <laughs> going to be pretty big uh, for this reactor. This should be a, a perfect square. We'll, we'll probably find out uh, relatively soon. Um, and chopping this down, uh, I mean, as you can see, it's not, not the worst. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, this is a lot faster than it otherwise would be. I could go at it with a few other tools, to be, to be honest with you. Um, honestly, the best tool to go at it with would probably be the destruction uh, gadget, which... Should work, should do the trick. These are a little bit scary because they do just void stuff, so we do have to be careful. Um, 16 length, 16 right, and 16 up. That should be good because obviously it shouldn't go too far. We can actually probably lower the depth to be a little bit lower because I obviously I don't want to go further than we need to. So for example, if we look at this in F5 maybe? No, I'm trying to see, like look in the left corner. You can see it doesn't go the full range. Um, which is what we want. We don't, we don't want it to go the full full distance. Um, same with this. We don't want that to go the full... Uh, it should be fine. Because as you can see, it's going up, not down. So I think we're good. I'm, I'm just going to do it. Boom. So what this does is it voids it. As in all that stuff is gone. It didn't drop it as blocks as you can see. It's gone. We might have lost some reactor casing. That's fine in the grand scheme of things. Um, but what we do have now is a pretty nice uh, setup over here. Um, so... Obviously, we've got this uh, dug out. Now, I've just got to build the thing um, once we get rid of this stuff. Building as well is going to be relatively easy. We also want to make sure we get this out of our system so that we don't accidentally uh, break stuff. Um, building can be done with the building gadget. So, it actually, it, it genuinely saves us a lot of time. It still is a big build, which means everything's going to take time, especially if you make a mistake because you're going to have to rip everything apart. So, for example, if this isn't, uh, 18 by 18, that's going to be really annoying. Um, do we have measuring tape in this pack? Efficiency meter and some other thing. Some of these give you tape. Uh, I feel like I check every episode. There's there's something that allows you to measure the distance. You know what I mean? Um, is that what I just searched before? At measure, maybe? No. Oh, why would it be at measure? Hashtag measure? Look for a tag, maybe? No. Nah. Um, ruler? <laughs> I, feel, I genuinely, I think I check this every time. Um... There was a mod once upon a time that let you like right click two, two spots, you know, and you could actually genuinely find out the length without having to sort of, you know, count in the real world, I guess. Um, but it's fine. So I'm going to do all this. In the perfect world, we would also have just a template already made, you know what I mean? So I could just, um, what do you call it? What's the word? By the way, as you can see, we're going to need a lot of this stuff. Um, we could just paste in the structure, you know what I mean? Like that. that's the perfect scenario, um, but it's, it's fine. We can get this going. I might... I'll tell you what, I'll do a quick look. I'll search, um, what should I search for? Mechanism, max size, uh, fission reactor. And then I'll search paste and see if that shows something up. Um, I couldn't find one. I'm just going to build this. Um, if you remind me, I can possibly make a template for this and, and, and post it, uh, somewhere. Just like <laughs> the basic design. I, I would think that there is just a template somewhere. I, I don't know where to look. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, the, the other thing is obviously building the height of it. Um, so this is kind of, this is the ground floor. Obviously, we can 
reload the textures. Uh, one, two, three, four. And this is the height. Um, and so we can stand up here. All of these will go to the perfect height. We can slap the tops on them. And voila, we have the frame. <laughs> So this is going to be uh, apparently be a very big reactor. Um, so yeah, some of these, like these walls on the side here, I'm going to make them all just reactor casing since that seems to be the easy thing to do. Um, and then we'll figure out what we're doing for uh, the glass, if we even want to do glass at this point, because obviously it might just look a bit weird having that much glass. We can do some, you know, it's not, it won't be a bad idea, I guess. Maybe I should order some of that glass right now. Let's search, um, oh God, reactor, reactor glass. We'll get like 512 just like ready. Uh, you know what? We'll get a thousand ready. <laughs> I don't think we're going to use that much, but it might, once again, it might just be nice to have. Um, this thing, by the way, <sighs> it is going to be insane if we do want to push it the full length, right? And, and by what I mean here is we can fill this guy up a number of different ways. The easiest way I believe is just doing a checker, a checker pattern throughout the entire thing, right? Just a checkerboard. Um, but we don't have to, you know what I mean? It's, uh, I don't really know. I, I, I really don't know. You know what? I kind of want to do it like this. You know what I mean? Like I want to have uh, all the corners on this side be glass. So it's sort of uh, like it alternates, I guess. Um, th this should be nice. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. So like um, all this is glass. We can obviously reload it so it's all connected. And then I want glass here and glass on the roof. Maybe? Yeah, ma maybe. We're going to need more. <laughs> Oh, but I just crafted a thousand of these and they made them instantly and I really was not expecting it. I've also just realized I probably didn't want to place this glass just yet, which is actually a little bit annoying, but it's fine. We can... Oh, did that rip apart the wall? Oh, it did a bit. Okay. Let me... I'll try and figure out what I'm doing here. Oh, you know what? I also uh, forgot to put the power back on those machines. Um, Some of you are probably yelling about that, but uh, all is good. All is good. So yeah, in this machine, uh, in, in, in this reactor... We're going to want a number of things. Um, one, well, I say a number of things. We're pretty much just going to want this stuff. Now, there's a few options we have. One is, I think we can do this, right? We could place them there, or we could place them like here and then go like this, right? And we could do this, I believe, the entire way across. And I think this is fine. I, I think this is enough uh, space for them to breathe. Arguably, we could clear this side as well. The reason why we would do that is because obviously these uh, fuel rods, right? They're touching a wall, which means that side of the block is going to heat up a lot. Whereas, um, as you can see for the rest of these, they have all four faces um, clear, essentially. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> and it's honestly, it's a pretty dangerous game to be playing, but we'll, we're going to just sort of give it a shot. I can probably look it up. In fact, this wiki I had open probably tells me how to do it, I would imagine. I, I think we can get away with it. The other point I was making is that one in the corner has like two sides face. So it's like, I, I don't know if that's an issue, but I'm essentially going to do this pattern the whole way through. I do th recall this having a checkerboard mode. Yeah, it does have a grid mode. Does this, does this work in our favor? Um, huh. I think it does, right? Like that's, that's what we want. Is it? How, how do we want this? We want this like that, right? So I would place that there, and then I would place that there, and then realistically I would place one there as well, but we've already got one. But I would start here, and that's what we want? Yeah, okay. Oh, th th this works quite well. Um, so I pretty much just do this the entire way along, assuming I click on the right spots. Um, I, think, I think I just keep doing this, like as we were. And as you can see, it sort of fills in the gaps. Um... Right? <laughs> I think so, yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so we now have a checkerboard. Um, it's beautiful. <laughs> and there it is. So, where do we go from here, you might be wondering? Well, we actually have a surprising amount of options. Ah, uh, we don't have too many good options. I mean, like, what I could do is I could spam click this all the way up. That's an option. Or, I can just do the build to me, right? We can do build to me. And what I should be able to do is assuming I go like one block lower than the height. So like here, I can now just go and click on all of these and it will build the perfect height. Oh, you know what? I think we actually want to go one further down because I think you want the control rods to be one lower. Oh, that's going to be annoying breaking all that stuff, but it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. So assuming this is fine, well, then we're done. 
<laughs> but allegedly. Um, so the next thing we're going to want is obviously the rods on top. So the control assemblies. Um, these, we might be able to go away with like 5, 12. Uh, I don't really know how many we have. Um, I also don't know how slow they'll take to um, craft. Well, I guess actually I sort of take that back. If I go ahead and cancel this, in theory, we do know how many we have. If I just grab a calculator, right? Because in theory, we have... Uh, inside of this would be what? Um, uh, would it be 16 by 16? I think so. Um, because obviously 18 is the end bit on either side. And then we would divide that by 2. So I think I only need 128. We'll, we'll see if I've done that correctly. Um, 128, we'll order that. That might maybe hopefully take a little bit less. What are we mainly crafting? A bunch of this stuff. Hmm. She'll be right. <laughs> oh, also... This is, uh, stop doing things. So, uh, <laughs> I think something we've got, uh, has broken, which uh, is kind of expected at this point. Um, by the way, using A2, uh, lots of A2 stuff happening nowadays. Um, using A2 for the infusing, uh, factory is honestly the play, and I might change our system to fix that. Oh, it actually is, it is doing stuff, it's just not being reflected anywhere. <laughs> but it, as you can see, it is working, it's just got a lot to churn through. Um, we can help it out. We've got some time in the bottle. We can speed this guy up a little bit. And as you can see now, he's uh, churning through it a little bit faster. If we really wanted to, I would entangle this guy here so that he's getting extra power. And then I can speed this guy up even faster. And if we look now... Hmm. Hold on. Yeah. As you can see now, it's a little bit faster. <laughs> Ever so slightly. There. Oh, yeah. There we go. Beautiful. Um, cool. Cool. Awesome. Nice. I got my stuff. <laughs> Alright, so we'll, we'll go back over there. I should place more of these. Uh, honestly, like the portals... Uh, that, I mean, they work. They get the job done. Waystones are just kind of better. Like, they're just... They take up one block. You go wherever you want. They're all linked within the one. Like, I can go from here to the end if I want to. I don't need to go through three different portals. It's just better. It's just better. I'll, I'll have to try and keep that in mind for the future. Uh, but anyhow, this oh, this thing's gonna look very powerful. <laughs> this, it already looks so powerful. Okay, okay, okay. We are going to now grab these control rods. Perfect. Um, now, what we're gonna do here is gonna be a little bit trickier. Um, we'll select it. I think we just want to do the grid pattern again. I think this is the play. Lower it back down and try to do this stuff. Um, and that should work. So I'm just gonna go through here and do this. Oh, this is a nice little pattern. You just do one, two. So just do one, two. Ah, oh, perfect. All right, there we go. And we should have two left. Yep, perfect. One, two. Okay, so I believe now we put the lid on it. So that's going to be obviously the glass uh, from earlier, all this reactor glass. Uh, there we go. We'll place down one. We'll select you. We'll put you into build to me. And then we'll just build this guy. And then... And then it's pretty much done. There's still obviously more we need to do because I need to place like the imports and the exports and stuff. Um, but this should be, you know, pretty pretty much it, right? All right, it's all placed. And as you can see, it's actually openable, which is pretty ridiculous. We can see some stats here. We can see the heat capacity. We can see the maximum burn rate. It can do like pretty much two buckets per tick worth of, um, worth of burning, which is insanity, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge soon. Um, in terms of everything else, how do we want to do it? Um, realistically, we attach stuff on this side. The problem with that is I'm going to have to run the cable from this controller all the way over there. Not the end of the world, I guess. Um, this also has the potential to make us a lot of power as well, which is obviously beautiful. Ooh, I might be able to go underneath. <gasps> oh, oh. That could work. That could be really cool. So, for example, we could bring this guy through this way, right? Obviously. And then this way. I'll have to, you know, I'll have to, like, patch up the roof and stuff. Oh, yeah, it's actually... We almost got, like, a little chamber here already. Look at this. Look, look, look at what's going on. <laughs> nice. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Great things are happening. Great things are happening. We'll, we'll patch that up. We'll put a roof in. <laughs> but I just want access to the bottom here. And then we'll put in the ports and stuff. Um, so in terms of the ports, uh, a few things. First of all, what I might do is over on this side, I kind of... Uh, I don't know where I want to put it. Because once we place these logic guys down, they're sort of down for good. You know what I mean? 
Um, so it's sort of like, where do I, where do I feel comfortable placing them? Um, I sort of want them out of the way, but still accessible in the future. We might, I might put this into small square mode and just sort of like dig out a little bit of a path through here. And then occasionally I can do that. Yeah, that should be good. And, and we'll just like slap it here, right? So for example, I'm going to break this, break this, break this. Oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> By the way, the shade is being used at the moment uh, over imagined shaders. What a world we live in. What a phenomenally beautiful world we live in. Um, but I'm going to place these guys down. Uh, now, I'm going to place some here. I'm also going to like do some gaps and place some. And I'm going to do some gaps because we don't need to use them all. We don't. But it's nice to have some space to part because some you don't want next to each other. Some you do. So I think this is pretty good. That should hopefully keep us covered because each of these, you can configure them to do certain things. This is fine. <laughs> we can work with that, I'm sure. Um, over on this side, we want other stuff. So... For example, if we go back to fission, we are going to want some ports. We are going to want, I believe, four. I believe. So we'll get four. They should hopefully not take too long to craft. And then we got to place them somewhere. Um, what I might do again is this pattern here, I guess. This sort of works. And realistically, that's good enough, right? What we do now is we grab our uh, configuration tool, which I've clearly lost somewhere. We grab this guy up. And now we need to change these. So with your chat on, it's very important to have your chat on, you can set what these do. So for example, this can output waste and this could output coolant. So we have both our outputs uh, right on this side. These are both set to input. Um, so input only. Yep, we'll keep them both as they are. Both of them are input only. Sounds good to me. Um, cool. So that's pretty much it, right? Now we just need to hook the stuff up. So how do we do this? Um, I could branch off of this cable here, but that doesn't seem too smart because obviously, um, well, it just doesn't seem too smart. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is latch off to this cable here. Um, we'll run it down into this direction. So I'll build under here. There we go. Where else do I need to go? Let's go like through here and we can bring the cable over because we've only got four connections here in terms of, uh, what do you call it? Um, like actually moving stuff. So that should be fine. And then we can work everything else out. Everything's good. Nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling good is essentially, I guess, what I'm getting at. All right. So what we'll need here are going to be more of these Fluix cables. Um, so these we're going to want to make more of, which means... Uh, there we go. <laughs> which means now we have more of them. So that guy's going to go there. I will bring him under the ground just to, you know, hide the stuff away a little bit better. Um, and this cable, we're just going to run connected to the other stuff. So keep bringing it through here. And I'll just connect it on there and that should be good. So we've got one channel being used. This cable can carry eight and it's connected to one side of the controller, which can take 32 uh, connections. So essentially we're good. That can go back there. Oh, that is the wrong stuff. That can go back there. Um, over here, we can run this like so. We can top that off like that. And then realistically, we can fill this up with sand. <laughs> um, up here, we probably should do the same. So just like cover this up. And then, uh, obviously, in the perfect world, we come back up here and we uh, cover this up as well. Once again, just to sort of keep things looking relatively nice, I guess. Um, so then what do we have? We have the connection here. I'm going to bring this cable up, uh, pretty much up here. Then we're going to go... And we're going to connect on all sides. Um, so what do we do? Well, realistically, for one of these inputs, we want a connection. Um... And one of the, so, so what I might actually want to do here, sorry, is uh, disconnect these and run like this, like that. Um, actually, hold on, that's going to be there. I think I want to configure this to be a waste output and have this be a coolant output. The reason why I want to do this is because this side, uh, you know what, hold on. <laughs> All right, the reason why I want to do that is because this side over here, I actually want to do some other things. So realistically... Um, we could probably just move this over one and it would probably look infinitely better than having this weird connection go up and then change direction. So bear with me, but that should work. Um, so on this side, we obviously have, um, input, which I'm going to put water in and then we have output, which is going to be all the steam. So what I'm going to use for this, because obviously this machine here is going to store a lot of water. I don't know how much it can store, but it can store a lot. I would imagine. Um, we are going to go into here. We're going to search for a sink. We're going to order one. Hopefully it arrives shortly <laughs> yep it does beautiful um we can place it realistically wherever i'm gonna place mine down here <laughs> sure um we're gonna grab logic cables we're going to grab um a variable card just a blank one 
and we're going to grab fluid uh, interface and we also want a fluid exporter. Um, yeah, fluid exporter. So we'll search export, oh, if I can spell it, exporter and we'll try and grab one of these. It's going to use the one we had on us, but that's fine. We'll, we can craft another, I'm sure. So there we go. And so what we're going to do here is this cable is going to go up here. We are going to have the exporter on that side to export the water. We're going to have the fluid interface here to grab all the water. We're going to open this guy up, place in the variable card. And as you'll see in here, it will start filling up with water. But very slowly, we're going to burn through that pretty much instantly. So what we want to do instead is open this guy up, click on this plus, go across here. We want to remove the fluid transfer rate. And then we're going to place as many nines as we can. And then make sure it's ticked at the bottom. That's the important part. So I believe we're ticked. We can open this up. It's already full. It's already full. <laughs> An incomprehensible amount of water just went in there. Well, I guess it's comprehensible. It's, it, it's literally a number that's written in here if you go back and have a look. Um, so anyway, that's fine. But th that's good. All, all's well there. This part is going to be the coolant output. So that is going to be steam. There is going to be a lot of steam. The issue with that is we don't have a gas uh, cable, right? Or, or, or a gas interface from Integrated Dynamics as far as I know. I'm not sure if you can get away with using a fluid exporter. I'll have a quick Google. I'll say uh, mechanism gas integrated dynamics. We'll, we'll see what it says. Maybe someone will say that you can use fluid uh, interfaces. I'm not sure. Um, people have said no. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Um, in that case, what are our options? Now, I'm not using pipes because pipes and mechanism multi-blocks don't go together. They, I mean, they, they work in theory, but they break apart and you don't want anything that's a part of this system to break apart because it will, it'll break. It'll literally, it'll break. So what we want instead is probably the pipes from mechanism. So those are going to be pressurized tubes that we want. Um, we have a bunch of ultimate ones, but what this might mean is that we might want more than one port because this guy can do what? He can do 256 thousand millibuckets per tick that might be enough i i mean realistically what's this uh i mean yeah this is 500 million oh so, yeah 500 million millibuckets per tick this thing can do 200 mil, uh, 200 thousand millibuckets per tick so like if i, I mean i don't think we're gonna burn that much we, we can see we can give it a test i guess it's just if we have to pull this apart it's gonna be a bit painful uh Realistically, the, I'll, I'll show you what the better solution is here. Some backup ones. I reckon we go port. We grab uh, six of these. And I'm going to fill in these gaps with them. It, it, we might not have to use them. But if we need to, it's going to be really nice having them there, I think. So, so I do think it'll be worth it. So we'll break apart these. Grab that. Place these guys down. And make sure they're set to be uh, coolant outputs. So output coolant is the light blue one. We're just going to right click these twice. That might be good enough. Now, in terms of where we're going to send this stuff, what we can do is we can grab a chemical uh, tank. Once again, we probably want a, um, you know, a higher tier one if we can get our hands on it. You know what? Something here is not working. <sighs> I was trying to make the, uh, the, the chemical tank, but it's not, we're not quite there yet. Well, you know what I think's happened? I think the obsidian that we're putting through the crushing wheel is no longer giving us the right thing. I think it's now giving... Oh, no, it still says it's giving powdered obsidian. Well, we'll have to double check because, I mean, we're, we're clearly not getting the stuff um, by any means. I think these need to be bigger. I think that's the problem because I just picked up a bunch of obsidian just by standing here, um, which shouldn't happen. And it also takes a... See, why did I pick that up? I know I've got my magnet on, but this is a demagnetizer. It's not meant to be able to magnet. Um, we'll go further. We'll see, we'll see what that does. But we shouldn't be picking up obsidian at all. I'm sort of disgusted to be picking it up. Okay, so I made it through. That's good. Okay. All right, well, anyway, we've got this guy. Um, now, in terms of this guy, um, he can dump resources. Oh, we still... Obsidian still fell on the ground. It's like this guy can't crush that much at once. I don't really know what's going on. Maybe, do I need to bring it back a bit? Maybe he's throwing the stuff too far. Like, where does he drop it now? He's dropping it, what well, looks to be closer, I think. 
You know, I, I sort of feel like the crushing wheels just aren't being reliable for whatever reason. We might have to redo the system there or something because it doesn't appear to be working. Maybe a conveyor belt running through it or something might work better. Um, anyhow, we're going to go see if this uh, chemical tank works. And if it doesn't, ugh, unlucky. <laughs> um, realistically, if we make a turbine, that'll take care of the steam 100%. But we don't have the turbine yet. That, that would probably be next episode, if anything, if we really wanted to. Um, but in theory, this tank here, being connected like so, will insert gases um, from the top. Yep, gases at the top. And then we can set it to dump excess. So it'll dump all the stuff it needs to. And that should be fine. Um, what we can do as well is we can configure these pipes to do what they should. So for example, output coolant, make sure this guy's extracting. This guy should be fine. Over here, these are almost fine. All we're going to have to do is an exporter, so an ME export bus, and then um, an import bus, an ME import bus, realistically, grab one of these, and we're going to have it export the fuel up here and import the other stuff there. So inside of here is going to be Fissile Fuel. As we can see, it will now fill up with Fissile Fuel. It doesn't have much. <laughs> we should probably figure out how to speed that up. I probably need some uh, acceleration cards, maybe. I would imagine. Um, what do we need for this? Some stuff. Awesome. Of course we do. Um, but, but this should be doable, is I guess. Oh, we've actually, we've got some. Um, can I p place these in? Awesome. So now how much do we have? Okay, now we're getting like a, a lot more at a time. So this guy will fill up with however much we've got. This guy should import just anything realistically. If we want to, though, we can search um, nuclear waste. And we want that to import into our system. Now, as you'll see here, fissile fuel is just fissile fuel. Nuclear waste is radioactive. We are going to need a different storage capacity to, well, to store it, right? Because currently we've just got normal uh, chemical storage cells. We are going to want this guy here, the radioactive um, storage component. Now, in terms of resources, we've got them. That's all we need, this stuff right here. The final ingredient is going to be a radioactive waste barrel which I guess makes sense. And then all we need is, is an inscriber. So we can go ahead and grab one of these. The inscriber we can place down pretty much wherever I would imagine. Does that provide power? I thought it would, but it kind of doesn't really look like it is. Um, anyhow, we're going to chuck this stuff in and yeah, it needs power. So I guess we'll grab an ender gate. Fine. <laughs> Fine. We'll slap. Oh, oh, come on. Come on. Pick it up. Pick it up. Boom. We provide power. This will craft a radioactive storage component. Any second now. Here we go. Beautiful. Then we grab this guy and we combine him. Ooh, we need some stuff to do it. We're going to need some polonium, <laughs> which I wasn't too prepared of. We're also going to need these HDPE pellets, which need like substrate and stuff. To be honest, that's a little bit annoying to get. I'm probably going to have to do it, but I'm not, I'm not happy about it is I guess what I'm getting at here. Um, so... Well, I mean, to begin with, let's see how this works. I'm going to press start. As we can see at the moment, there is no steam buildup. Everything is working. It's full of water. Steam is getting extracted. We'll check to see what the dumping is looking like at the moment. Nothing in here. Dumping excess. Well, nothing in here. Hmm. It's not good that there's nothing in here. Like, there should be something in here. You know what I mean? So that is a little bit concerning to say the least. Um, obviously as well, we're also going to want, not at the moment, we don't need it, but we will want acceleration cards, um, for specifically, um, for this guy, right? To extract the waste. But at the moment, it's fine. Now, yeah, cool. Awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> Everything's fine. As you can see, it's still heating up ever so slowly. It will reach a point where it's, uh, happy where it's at. What we want to do is go in here and we want to increase it. So for example, we're, we're doing one millibucket per tick. We increase that by 10. Now, as you can see, steam is coming out. Steam is filling up here. We don't have any extra steam in the system. We are currently losing fissile fuel. Are we? I can't tell. It looks like we're losing fissile fuel. I think we are. Uh, we're at 11 at the moment. Let, let me just see. We're down to 10. Let's see when it goes up. Okay, no, we're gaining fissile fuel, so that's fine. Um, the steam isn't filling up. It's all being uh, exported once this guy's full. If we wanted to, we could do dumping entirely. Oh, dumping is not what we want to do. We want to be doing dumping excess, apparently. Apparently, that is what we want to do. Apparently, just straight dumping doesn't do the trick. Good to know. 
a bit strange, but good to know. Um, awesome. Everything's working once again. Beautiful. If we want to again, we can bump this up to say 20. It's going to get hotter. It's going to be producing a lot more um, everything, essentially. But once again, it looks like we're fine. We're burning the stuff a lot faster now. Sounds good to me. Let's try 40. So once again, okay, now we're gaining steam. Let's lower this back down. We're going to quickly put this back down to 20. That's what we need to watch out on. Because even though we've got this set up, we do not want like more steam coming out of the system because that is just a bad time for everyone involved. We could try to store steam in the A2 system. Once again, I don't really think that's a good idea. This is probably our play is to just have everything be extracted. I don't know if this guy can actually handle everything. We'll find out. <laughs> We'll definitely find out. Let's place that there. I'm going to set all of these to extract. And we'll see if it's just a matter of piping or whether it's a matter of tanks. You know what I mean? Like, we'll see what the limiting factor is here. Um, because this guy might be able to void infinite. But the problem is we don't have enough pipes moving the stuff in there. Right? That that, that makes sense. Um, make sure all these are set to input. That should be fine. Um, so, once again, everything's back down to zero. Um, let's go to 40 once again. Previously, this was filling up with steam. Now, as you can see... Oh, it still is. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, that essentially means that this guy's full. He he can't handle it. So we can go back down to 20. Once again, you want to be... These things can explode. You want to be very careful. Very, very careful. So it's lowering. Everything appears to be good here. We're good. We're fine. We're fine. I'm going to go do some stuff now. <laughs> now, the stuff I'm going to do is I want to get my hands on more of those um, chemical tanks. So we're going to go to our uh, auto crafting and quickly hook that stuff up. Because, I mean, that just seems like a pretty good play. Um, so, we'll open this up. We will search tank. And I will go ahead and grab it, all of these recipes here. All of these ones. So, I will be back. Okay, so I've ordered six of them. So, that should be good. Um, but, yeah, as you can see, we're going to need, I don't know. Arguably, we just need a better system to get rid of the stuff, to void it. I do think, hold on. I, I might I might be being a bit dumb here. I'm pretty sure we can chuck stuff into a fluid trash can. Can void liquids and gases. I think we're good. I think this might just be able to do it instead of that tank there. So at the moment, obviously, um, you know, we're still taking care of things. Realistically, I place this guy here. And we should be good. I'm going to go ahead and break this. And this. And let's see what happens. So currently, oh, I'm right clicking the wrong things. No steam in there. Sounds good to me. Let's pick this up. Pick that up. And pick this up. Okay. <laughs> so everything I believe should be getting voided. There's no steam in here. Everything is looking good. Let's bump this up again to 40. In terms of the steam, none yet. We'll give it a little bit because it took a little bit last time. Now, by the way, we are going to be burning a lot more fuel than we can make at the moment. Remember, everything here, apart from, I guess, maybe this setup, is expandable. Um, easily expandable, I guess, is the main point. So, yeah, let's push this up even further. We, we might as well see what we can get away with. So, I'm going to bump this up to 80. It's an insane rate we're increasing it by, but if it works, it works. Remember, this thing has the capacity to do 2,000 millibuckets per tick, which is insane. Everything's looking pretty good. The main thing, of course, is the coolant. I'm going to increase this to 200. I'm just going to jump the gun. 200 millibuckets per tick. The temperature's up. We're not taking damage. We're not critical. Everything's working fine. We have all the coolant going away. We appear to be good. By the way, if any issues happen, you click scram. You click scram instantly. You make sure steam is getting taken out. You make sure water's going in because it, the heat can still be rising even when the machine's off. It is very, very dangerous, um, this entire thing. And then, once again, big explosion. So, <laughs> very, very dangerous. Um, at the moment, the heat's like pretty much stagnant, right? It's pretty much whatever we put it up to. Millibuckets per tick. I'm wondering if that's like how much steam we have to take out. I don't think it is because I think we've got a lot less at the moment. Um, let's bump this up again. I'm going to go 300. I'm just going to be increasing it by like 100 each time because it's it's a very high number that we're increasing. Um, once again, I mean, this is probably good, right? Mm, I mean, listen, if we can go further. 500? Yeah. The temperature is really hot. That is... <laughs> oh, and we're, we're, we're taking in heat. Okay. I'm going to scram it. Just in case. Because it was rising very, very quickly. We're empty again. Let's turn it back on. 
we're still making steam. Okay, so it looks like 300 was a pretty sweet spot. If we want to go further, we're going to need to be taking that steam out a lot faster than uh, we currently can. Which means, realistically, a lot more ports. We can do that. It's, you know, it, it's doable. It's definitely, it's, it's on the table, it's doable. But at the moment, 300 millibuckets per tick for what we've got set up. Six of these guys are with uh, ultimate pipes. Looking pretty good. Um, once again, in terms of moving the gas, realistically, if we had a better way to do it, that would be perfect. I don't think you can output directly into a trash can. We could try. Like, um, I could place this directly on to the port. For example, this port right here, right? I can slap him right there. Um, and we can bump this up to 400 since we know that that's going to increase it. Do we have steam? Give it a few seconds because remember it took a little bit last time. Oddly enough, we seem fine. Does that actually work? There's no shot this works. No shot. Hold on. Let's go 500. Remembering to be ready to turn it off. Wow. Okay. Look, nothing's even showing up here because we've got this... Holy moly. That's one way to do it. There we go. Okay, as you can see, by the way, we are burning a lot more fuel fuel than we are creating currently. So this is perfect. We'll leave it as it is. Although we could do 1,000. And that would look like this. Oh, we, we would be taking damage. We don't want to do 1,000. We're going to lower this back down to being 500. We do not want to be taking damage. The damage will slowly dissipate. I don't know if the machine has to be on or if it has to be off when that's happening. But it will lower as long as the temperature is not, I believe, over 1,000. Um, which begs the question of... See, it went down to 2%. Which begs the question of how do I push this further? What do I need to do? to ensure it's cooler. In terms of coolant, if we search um, coolant, um, this stuff has coolant efficiency. You can actually see. Let's do, um, let's do hashtag fluid, hashtag liquid, hashtag coolant, maybe? I want to look at every coolant in the game, but I don't know what I'm meant to be searching for there. Is it a dollar sign coolant? Dollar sign fluid, dollar sign liquid. I'm not sure. How do I... Yeah, I, don't, I really don't know how to look for liquids. Um, but my point is, if some of these mechanism things have... Uh, like, if I do rotary... Hold on, that's this guy here, right? If I look at this guy's recipe, he can condense stuff into liquids. What of these have coolant properties, I guess, is my question. Because what's water's coolant property? And how does everything else relate to it? Water doesn't even say. Or at least it doesn't say in this menu screen here. Which I'm not happy about. Because <laughs> if I search water, it will tell me nothing. Interesting. But when I searched coolant, it told me these guys work at 100%. Hmm. I think sodium is better. Like, I think you put in sodium as a coolant and you get out superheated sodium. And then you've got to, you know, you've got to turn this into steam in, in a boiler. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because look, you put it in a fission reactor. So, do I want to right-click on this? Okay, hold on. Why does it not tell me? <laughs> Why does it not tell me the difference here? Like, what does this mean to me, realistically? Apart from just we get superheated sodium. I don't know. I really don't know what to make of this uh, menu screen. All I know is, we are out of fuel. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty crazy. The other option I'm thinking is possibly by removing some of these uh, fuel rods in here, we'll be able to increase it. We won't be able to go to the max, but we have, we'll be able to increase it because in theory, they'll be cooler, right? There'll be more coolant in there. Maybe that'll work. Um, I'd love to know. Yeah, I'd love some suggestions. Um, in the meantime, we want solar neutron activators. <laughs> That's what we want. So I'm going to have to go and make those. Um, I, I want to try to finish this guy off this episode. I think we can. I just, once again, I just need some polonium. Um, we need like one actual piece of polonium, which is going to mean a few things. We are going to need fluorite dust, I believe. So that's going to be a crusher recipe. So let's, I want to quickly like get this out of the way. Crusher recipe, that'll be good. Solar, neutron, that's going to be this guy here. We have pretty much everything except for a HDPE sheet. Oh, that's going to be annoying. I don't want to do that. I, I didn't want to do that this episode, but I think we have to. Um, okay. Uh, HD, oh, sorry, HDPE sheets. 
Um, these require HDP pellets, but also we'll enrich them. We're probably going to do that recipe. The pellets themselves are going to have to come out of a pressurized reaction chamber, which needs oxygen and ethylene. What I might do is I might add these to the system that we have. So for example, um, to make one of these, we need 50 millibuckets um, of ethylene and 10 millibuckets of oxygen. So I might go in here and search, uh, search oxygen, drag in this. Oh, is it not going to let me? <gasps> How dare you? How dare you not let me do that? Oh no, why can I not do that? Um, we might just have to make a pattern in our, uh, in the other zone, you know what I mean? Um, so, in the, hold on, hold on. <laughs> well, okay, bear with me. This episode might run a little bit longer than usual, but that, that, that's fine. I think you guys like that anyway. That can go in there for enriching. We're gonna go back into the other for our, our A system, right? Cause I wanna hook the thing up under here. Once again, just, I'm still a little bit scared of this thing. Yeah, we seem to be good. The only issue at the moment is the waste. That's what we're trying to take care of. Um, so, <sighs> what I need here, I believe, is going to be a pattern provider. So we'll grab this guy, slap him down there. Beautiful. On top of him is going to be a PRC. Or, a, yeah, whatever this is. A pressurized reaction chamber. So, pressurized reaction chamber we don't have. I can craft most of it, so it'll be fine. I'll just manually make one. All right, enrichment chamber, and then we have the PRC. Beautiful. This guy will go here. And then inside of this recipe, in this pattern provider, will be a pattern. This is an ME terminal. In the perfect world, we have a pattern encoding terminal, which is going to require an engineering uh, processor, as well as it looked like a crafting terminal, which is gonna need you know, some more stuff, but it's fine. As you can see, we can, we can order all that stuff. Um, so, I'm gonna pick this up. Open this up. We're going to turn that into a crafting terminal. We're going to turn that into a pattern encoding terminal. Slap that back down. Um, inside here, or I guess not inside there, but we want patterns, right? But we want these patterns from Applied Energistics. So we're going to need to order some stuff, but that should be fine. Grab out as many as let me. Four, sure. Um, inside this, we want the HDPE recipe right here. It puts in everything it's meant to beautifully. We're going to grab that. That guy is going to go in here. Um, so, awesome. This guy is going to be told, hey, from the bottom, you're going to do input and output, auto eject. Um, you're also going to be receiving fluids from the bottom and gases from the bottom, which it appears to be doing. Now, you will potentially, let's have a look. No, you won't make any extra gas. Awesome. That's fine. So, the next up is substrate. Now, substrate is made in the same machine, but with some other stuff. So, we can use water and hydrogen. And that's probably what we're going to do. So, I'm going to open this guy up. Look at the substrate recipe, paste this one in. Water, hydrogen, biofuel, and you're gonna produce some ethylene as well as a little bit of a bonus, sure. Um, we're gonna chuck that into here as well. And what that means is we wanna go down here and we wanna make sure that gases is input and output auto eject on. Fluids, it can't eject anyway. Everything else here looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we'll grab an ender gate. Make sure this guy's powered. Sure, I can sit at the top for now. Um, in terms of everything else, we probably want to move the rest on top as well for symmetry. Um, for the substrate, or the biofuel, sorry, this is just going to be some sort of uh, food in a crusher, which we should have a part of this system, realistically. Oh, I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> All right, we'll grab a crushing factory. Once again, though, the beauty of this is indeed what you're looking at right now, which is that it's just expandable. You know what I mean? We can, we can do this. All right, so the crushing factory can go there. Um, I think we'll do a pattern in provider again. The, the, the thing I'm questioning is whether or not we uh, want this set up to be non-stop or only when we order it. And I think we want to have it be only when we order it. So we'll place this here. Um, obviously, I want the recipe for that stuff, which apparently I didn't grab, but we'll go biofuel. Um, what do we want? Um, in our system... Or I guess what's easily farmable, like if I go phytogenic, hold on, I think I know what to do. We'll do phytogenic, grab one of these out. Um, this guy's going to pretty much go here. Um, and then we're going to just pretty much pick something, right? <laughs> so for example, moss, melon. Yeah, let's do melon. Uh, sure, let's do melon. Now, listen, I know there are perfect ways to make this stuff. This is all we're going to do. We're going to say melon is there. And then what I'm going to do as well is I think I'm, I think I'm going to make another pattern. Uh, provider and another recipe for this guy right here and we're going to tell him input output from the bottom um, and we're going to just put in the recipe for making melon 
So we're gonna grab, uh... Oh, we don't have the recipe for it. Oh, why do they make things difficult? Okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, no. We're gonna change the recipe. I... I don't want to have to craft stuff after I've, like, already crafted it. So what, we'll, uh... Hmm. Hold on. Let's grab this. So what we're gonna do instead is a different recipe. For example, potato. We're gonna do potato. Potato should work. Um, then we're gonna grab the potato recipe. That's what I was gonna say from Phytogenic Insulator. So this guy here, you might get poisonous potato. Oh, but we're gonna get poisonous potato. I don't want poisonous potato. Hold on. <laughs> Let's do, is it one with carrots? Carrots are a bit of a safe bet, right? Because you only ever get carrots. We can do, uh, we can do nether warts. I think nether warts work. Let's do nether warts. And then nether wart we're gonna get from, uh, what do you call it? From the Phytogenic Insulator. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, perfect. Fido grow we won't put in. We could. We don't need to. I'm not gonna. That's fine. And that should be good. So, we're gonna come over here. You are going to get the biofuel. You are going to get the wart. Um, we are going to go ender gate. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna slap you on top. So, you're powered. Um, this guy as well. We're gonna have to do the same thing. Power him and also tell him to accept any output items below. So, items, input, output, auto eject. And auto sort on. I think we're pretty much good. I think all I want to do is put nether wart in the system so we can grab a stack of nether wart, open this guy up and chuck it in, and it does go in. Uh, I don't know where it's gone in. Did we put a storage cell in here? Oh, we did. Yeah, cool. Um, so that should work. So, where do we go from here, you might be wondering? Well, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> and that's the mystery today. I think what I can do is I can order HDPE. So, for example, can I order three of these? No. We need eth we need liquid ethylene and hydrogen. Um, <laughs> why? Okay, okay. So, I, I didn't realize. This one uses liquid ethylene. Okay, I gotcha. So, that that's fine. All I need, though, is the ability to make liquid ethylene. Um, and we don't really have that on demand. Uh, so, I'm going to need another rotary uh, condensator. That'll be fine. Um, I don't even know what else we needed to be, to be real with you here. Um, let's go ahead and pull this apart and pull that apart. Alrighty, so we're gonna go liquid ethylene. We're gonna go this recipe here. Boom. Ethylene equals liquid ethylene. Perfect. We will obviously need another pattern. That's gonna need more glass, but that's fine. We're getting there. We're getting there. I know it's a little bit tedious, especially at this point, but um, hopefully everything's making sense and hopefully, hopefully this goes well. Um, so we'll do the pattern there. This guy, we obviously want it to be condensed from a gas into a uh, liquid, so we want it condensed. That should be good. Um, obviously he needs power as well. That should be fine. Easily done. So that is then most of this recipe. Once again, like if I go to three now, now all we need is hydrogen. So where are we making hydrogen? We are making hydrogen in the, um, where is it? The electrolytic separator, which is this guy here. We're making hydrogen. There it is right there. So what do we do with this? What do we do with this? Well, in terms of outputs, we're currently only outputting that because as you can see, we can only output one type. We can't output both below as far as I know. Um, so we're, we have a bit of a pickle, right? Like if I set this to none, um, it just fills up, problem. Um, if I set this to just one, well, we only get one, also problem. So how do I extract the rest of the stuff? Sneakily. Sneakily. I reckon we chuck something back here. I reckon on the back of this block, we go uh, interface. So we craft one of these. We turn it into a panel. So that allows me to place it like this. We can tell this guy, hey, I'll tell you what. Send that other gas out the back. There you go. So he'll go in there. Obviously, we need to connect a cable up. That should be doable like so. And now the beauty of this is if I grab cable anchors, which we're going to have to craft... Um, using a cutting knife, apparently, but craftable nonetheless. I should then be able to place these guys around a piece of sandstone, for instance, and then, voila, we have a cable facade. And there we go. Now it's hidden. Cool. <laughs> awesome. And so we can do that literally with any cable. It's a pretty, pretty neat feature. Um, but long story short, now we're generating hydrogen and oxygen, which means in the system... We're storing hydrogen and oxygen and all that stuff. We, we honestly might need more of these uh, things set up. Realistically as well, I do want to petition these drives. 
I really do. So what we might get is a cell workbench real quick. Cell workbench. What this guy lets us do is um, essentially add a filter to uh, our storage cells. So if I just slap this guy on like here, for example, and we open this guy up and we grab this out when he's got five things in him and grab this guy out. Oh, he's, he actually filled up quite quickly. We'll, we'll leave th that guy for now. But I'm going to chuck this guy in here and click um, partition. So he's going to be told, hey, you can store hydrogen, fissile fuel, oxygen, uranium, and water vapor. So then I can chuck this guy in here. I can chuck this guy in here. Um, I think as well, how do I dump stuff in the system? I'm going to need an ME, I don't really know what it is. Um, applied, how do I, how do I dump stuff in the system? <laughs> it's going to be something. I think it's this guy, an IO port. Um, so I'll bookmark him. He's going to need some drives. We'll see how many of those we can make. We can make him. We, we can make him. <laughs> um, so two of those that can go in there. That should be an IO, uh, port. So this guy should allow me to put a disc in, for example, this one that we accidentally filled up that isn't partitioned. Obviously this one says it's partitioned. We can place this guy in here and he'll dump anything he can into the system, right? Um, assuming he's working, always active, move to output when ready, input into there. Um, oh, he's not even, really? He didn't, oh, this is a refined storage cable. Oh yeah, yeah okay, That's, that, that makes a lot more sense. Um, so realistically, hold on, we want to place this guy I mean, temporarily, he can just go there. There's no real harm done. So we'll chuck him there. And he's now put in everything he can into the system. And as you can see, now it's all gone in there, right? And there's even a filter. So if I put this guy back down, what I want to watch is, does this guy get anything else? He does. He gets the, the tritium or whatever it is. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck him back in there. Um, clear room cell, clear config settings. <sighs> I'll tell you what, we're going to watch it for a bit because I don't know if there's anything else that can go in. Oh, you know what? We'll grab it as it is, actually. Hold on. I am going to add the filter. Oh, see, we actually got sulfur dioxide and sulfuric acid. Cool. That was, that, was, that was a good catch because that's obviously not there. So we'll chuck that in there. Now, there could be another gas, you know what I mean, that we, we currently can't store. So I might grab another chemical uh, doohickey. Um, so I think I just want a 256, right? Just want to order another one of these. I, I think so. Um... And then we'll see if anything pops up into that guy. So, so, so that's essentially what we're doing. Um, the benefit of this means that when we fill up with oxygen or with hydrogen, sorry, all that will happen is that like the hydrogen will fill up there. In, um, yeah, realistically, we want like one per each. You know what I mean? Because otherwise this could fill up fully with hydrogen and then we won't have um, room for anything else. Uh, yeah, we actually, we honestly want a lot of these. Let's, let's craft 10. That's going to take a while, probably be done in the next episode, but I think it needs to be done regardless. So <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Um, in the meantime, what did I want to do? Oh yeah, we were doing like the solar neutron activators and stuff. I'll tell you what, it, it's pretty late for me. I'm going to call it there for now. We've done what we wanted. I'll turn this guy off purely so that he doesn't fill up with waste accidentally and that might cause an issue. I don't think it does, but it could. Um, so I think we're fine. I'm just going to leave it fill up. Once again, we'll, we'll be storing all the... Uh, or the fissile fuel anyway, so there's no real loss there. And then what we'll probably do is I will do, I will partition a storage cell for each, you know, uh, chemical that we have in this system or even in multiple drives if we need them. Um, and that should be worth it. And then, yeah. And then I think we're good. So at the moment, by the way, I'm pretty sure I can order this stuff, right? I can, oh, no, cra oh, we need a crafting CPU. Okay. I mean, that, that's going to cost another, um, what do you call it? Another storage cell. I guess I could use this guy. Hold on. I can combine this with this to get this and then I can search crafting and then I could try to make a co-processing unit. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. Um, oh, you know what? It's probably, yeah, getting overloaded at the moment. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that next episode. Long story short, the reactor's built. It works. It gets the job done. Next episode, we'll be doing polonium. We'll be making sure that we're actually taking the, uh, the liquid or sorry, the, the fuel out of here and we'll be making use of it. And then... And then we'll do whatever the hell we needed that for. <laughs> um, but yeah, awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, please do consider um, subscribing to the channel. It helps me out. To those of you who have already done that, thank you. Thank you for uh, helping out the channel, helping us grow. Um, we've been growing like crazy and, and I'm incredibly thankful uh, for the opportunity you guys have given me. This thing is so big, I don't know how we're putting it in a video. Maybe I'll just do that. Maybe just nice nice and simple. Or maybe we like go under here and do it. But um. Yeah, I'm really liking the AE2 stuff. Uh, it's 
it's quite a quite a fun switch up compared to what we're used to, I think. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.